Do you believe the state-sponsored official version of events, as it pertains to Israel and Iran and Israel's behaviour in Gaza, the official version, the official narrative, as is being relentlessly pumped out by the media, the right-wing press in particular, by Rishi Sunak, by Keir Starmer. And let's face it, when it comes to Rishi Sunak and Keir Starmer, we're talking about two virtually indistinguishable leaders from two virtually indistinguishable parties. Labour are the real Conservative, says Keir Starmer, as he promises to protect our way of life. I don't, and many, many other people across this country don't believe it either. And to tell the truth, I don't think even the journalists and the politicians who are pushing this line actually believe it themselves. So why, why are they doing it? What is the logic behind it? Well, quite simply, they have got to make sure that we support whatever it is they decide that they want to do regardless of the facts of the case. Remember those weapons of mass destruction the journalists and politicians kept telling us Iraq had in order to justify that disastrous war? What I would emphasise to you is that the threat from Saddam Hussein and weapons of mass destruction, chemical, biological, potentially nuclear weapons capability, that threat is real. There were no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. 1,625 UN and US inspectors spent two years searching 1,700 sites at a cost of more than $1 billion. Yesterday, they delivered their verdict. Well, we're now in a situation with regard to Israel, Israel's behaviour in Palestine, and Israel and Iran. Again, like Iraq, we're having a narrative spun to us by our politicians and our journalists, which they themselves know to be false, but nonetheless, they, as always, doing the bidding of the British establishment, are determined that the rest of us will believe so that we will support the actions that the British state takes, the British state wants to take in its own interest, regardless of the facts of the case or Israel's actual behaviour. But this week, two journalists, Nick Robinson from the BBC and Kay Burley from Sky, went off script in very different ways and with very different results. The official version of events is that all of a sudden, out of the blue, for no apparent reason, Iran suddenly launched a barrage of missiles against poor, blameless, always the victim, Israel. And here we have hard-right, warmongering, Zionist-supporting fanatic John Bolton given a platform on the BBC to make just this case virtually unchallenged. I'd like to hear from one politician from the United States, from Britain, from Germany, from any source you want, that would say, yes, well, you know, if the United States had uh, been targeted by 440 projectiles, uh, we, we would exercise restraint. We wouldn't respond. You know, we all know uh, what uh, leaders in Britain and the United States would do. And to call on Israel not to act in further self-defense, I, I think is reprehensible. Here's Labour's Yvette Cooper very much spinning the same line. I strongly condemn this reckless attack by Iran on Israel. Uh, there's been a real concern from the very beginning about the risks of escalation. And whilst the international community has been urging restraint instead, Iran has chosen to do the opposite. I think all of our concerns will be uh, for the security of people right across the region now. And it's very important that everything possible is done to prevent further escalation and to try and maintain people's security in the region. And here's the Israeli politician, Daniel Elon, completely sure that the surprise attack from Iran. It's a uh, crime that they have done, you know, sending more than 60 tons of explosives to, uh, you know, to, to, to Israel. We have no border with them. We have never had any uh, um, conflict with them. And they do it uh, just uh, to, to shore up, I think, uh, their um, extreme um, radical um, regime. And here's the Israeli president telling us in no uncertain terms 
that Israel is, as always, the victim. I guess every one of our decent viewers will ask him or herself, what would we do had we been attacked by 500 missiles and weapons like last night? And we've had this narrative ran down the throat from the UK media and every mainstream UK politician endlessly. But the thing is, it's not true. It's a lie. It strips the context away from the Iranians' actions and what it was that actually provoked this attack from Iran. Not once is the initial Israeli attack on the Iranian embassy ever mentioned by John Bolton in what was a lengthy interview where he was virtually completely unchallenged by the BBC interviewer. We also saw Yvette Cooper clearly condemn Iran's attack, but not once does she mention or condemn Israel's attack on the Iranian embassy. She doesn't do that in the interview, and as far as I'm aware, she's never done it full stop. We have no border with them. We have never had any uh, um, conflict with them, and they do it uh, just uh, to, to shore up, I think, uh, their um, extreme um, radical um, regime. The claim that Israel had no beef with Iran made in this interview is bizarre. It's, I mean, Israel had just bombed their embassy um, in Syria. I mean, for heaven's sake, I mean, to say we don't share a border and we don't have any conflict with them, there's been decades of ongoing conflict between Israel and Iran. And as for this... I guess every one of our decent viewers will ask him or herself, what would we do had we been attacked by 500 missiles and weapons like last night? Well, decent viewers, as he puts it, are probably a lot more concerned about his country's genocidal rampage across Gaza. As Philip Proudfoot says, Israel has claimed it will respond to Iran. So he expect yet more journalists, pundits and politicians to pretend this is a reaction to a wholly unprovoked attack from Tehran rather than a direct consequence of Israel's illegal bombing of Iran's consulate set against six months of genocidal violence. But two journalists broke rank this week. Firstly, there was Kay Barley when she was interviewing David Cameron, the unelected foreign secretary. Now, she had the bravery um, to actually point out that this wasn't an out-of-the-blue attack, that there actually was some historical backstory um, from just a few weeks ago that should be mentioned to put the whole thing in context. And you can almost see the panic in David Cameron's face. My God, aren't the journalists, aren't they meant to be our co-conspirators in spinning these lies? You can see him, you can absolutely see him blustering when she confronts him with this. Have a watch for yourself. Is it bad judgment or good judgment to hit uh, Iranian sovereign territory in Damascus? Look, that was a map. That's something the Israelis decided to do. Yeah, and they haven't okay. made a... I know, well, I, let me, I'll, I'll answer the question, which is I, I can completely understand the frustration the Israelis feel when they look at uh, the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, and they look at the terrible things that they have done all over the world, including the support they give to Hamas. And, of course, Hamas were responsible for October the 7th, and that is where all of this begins. So you can completely understand um, the frustration. Yeah, but um, what about Iran's frustration at part of its sovereign territory being flattened? Well, I would argue there is a, a massive degree of difference between what Israel did in Damascus and, as I said, 301 weapons being launched by the state of Iran at the state of Israel. For the first time, a state-on-state -state attack. 101 ballistic missiles, 36 cruise missiles, 185 drones. That is a degree of difference. Yes. And I think a reckless and dangerous thing for Iran to have done. And I think the whole world can see all these countries that have somehow wondered, well, you know, what is the true nature of Iran? It's there okay. in black and white. What would Britain do if a hostile nation flattened one of our consulates? Well, we would take, uh, we, you know, we would take the very strong action. And Iran would say that that's what they did? Well, what they did, as I said, was a so massive they... attack. 
So they, they were right the... to respond, but they overreacted, is well, that what you're I, saying? I, what I'm saying they is that the, right atta- the, attack, the attack they carried out was on a very large scale, much bigger than but people accepted. they have accepted. a right to respond? Well, countries have a right to respond when they feel they've suffered uh, an aggression. Of course they do. But look at the scale of that response. Had those weapons not so been shot right down, respond, but they, they, just could been, they could have been thousands of casualties. So astounding was this breach of the usual protocol, it even merited a mention in the House of Commons. There was not one single word in the Prime Minister's statement of condemnation of the Israeli destruction of the Iranian consulate in Damascus, which is the proximate reason for the event everyone is here in concert condemning. He was not even asked to to do so by the front bench opposite. Kay Burley is the only person so far to demand that of a government minister. And Burnley herself seemed well pleased with the mention. Then we have the second example of a journalist going off script this week. The not-so-happy experience of Nick Robinson of the BBC. Now, he was also interviewing David Cameron, as we said before, the completely unelected Foreign Secretary. Um, And what he did was to actually say something truthful, very truthful, but he phrased it as a question to David Cameron. And once again, David Cameron certainly wasn't expecting the bluntness of the question and the truth at the heart of the question. And you can hear it again in his response if you listen to the full interview. But here is the question that Nick Robinson asked that caused subsequent controversy. You will know, I think you've talked about, the fact that the West has been perceived to lose the argument with even many of its own people ever since the war on terror began. Isn't the real risk of where we are now that Western governments appear to back Israel the moment that Israel is under attack, but when Israel attacks and murders tens of thousands of innocent Palestinians, we say the words, but we do almost nothing. I don't think that's right at all. Yep, I'm afraid the factual reference embedded in that question as regards Israel's responsibility for the murder, and let's stress the word again, murder of tens of thousands of innocent Palestinians just was not acceptable at all. The Jewish Chronicle said, BBC accused of outrageous buys after Nick Robinson said Israel murders tens of thousands of innocents. Oh my God, the very idea of the Jewish Chronicle accusing anybody or anything of outrageous bias is just beyond satire. But anyway... Nick Robinson soon realised his mistake, that he'd been far too honest in the way he'd phrased that question, and he quickly reverted back to the role that he's always had in the UK media of the obsequious establishment toady, and quickly rushed out an apology, um, a long, rambling, pretty incoherent apology. Um, You can read it on X if you're so motivated. Um, so, there you have it. Expect more crocodile tears from our journalists and politicians about poor blameless Israel and how it's always the victim and how it never does anything wrong and how it's all the Palestinians' fault and how nobody can possibly blame them for the fact that they're killing tens of thousands of innocent Palestinians because that's the way the narrative will keep going and that's the way the narrative will continue. So, well done to both Kay Burley and Nick Robinson for those brief flashes of honesty, but I think they will be few and far between as we roll on over the next few months. Please don't forget to like the video, please don't forget to subscribe to the channel, help support left-wing voices on social media, and hope to chat again soon.